Okay, so uh, I want to discuss uh, a very important topic, uh, topic on them in a sense, a main um, uh, main statistical model that we will use. Uh, so samples, populations, and estimates. Uh, so uh, let me recall uh, that we generally uh, discuss uh, the following the following very very general model uh, that we have our data uh, that are usually stored in the tables but uh, they can be stored in some other way uh, anyway during our course we usually work with uh, tabular data so we have something in the tables and uh, we believe that uh, this data uh, was created uh, by some data generation process. So um, we conducted some experiment, we collected this data uh, using, some, using some experiment or some uh, obtaining information from uh, some corpora or something like this. Uh, and uh, we model this data generation process with uh, some kind of uh, probabilistic model. So we have a probabilistic model. And uh, what we are interested in uh, is uh, the following. Uh, we, we understand that this, uh, this uh, arrow is how our data are generated. But uh, we uh, now want to do a kind of reverse uh, thing. So we want to look at the data and say something about our uh, probabilistic model, about its parameters, um, to ask some, uh, to answer some questions about this probabilistic model. So this is data generation. And uh, this is our analysis. So we want to look at the data and make conclusions uh, about our process that generated this, this data. Uh, and uh, as an example, uh, what we discussed previously uh, was uh, a simple coin tossing model. Uh, so previously. Uh, in the previous series, in the previous episodes. Uh, we, we discussed um, yeah, a coin tossing model. Uh, for example, as it was discussed on the previous lecture, we discussed a case when a magician uh, or some person who claims to be a magician tries to predict outcome of some coin tossing and uh, the probability to uh, give uh, a prediction uh, depends on uh, whether this uh, person uh, has uh, some paranormal, uh, paranormal abilities. So if uh, there are no paranormal abilities, then uh, uh, probability to uh, yes, wine con coin tossing is one half. So uh, it is, uh, it can be considered as a kind of uh, coin tossing uh, at its own. Uh, but if, uh, if uh, there are some um, magical abilities, uh, then uh, we, we understand that it means uh, that probability to guess uh, one coin tossing is larger than one half. So uh, we have uh, some parameter P like probability uh, to guess the result of one coin, coin tossing. And uh, we have two, two options. Uh, we have two alternatives, uh, either P equals to one half, 
or p is larger than one half. Actually, it is also possible that p is less than one half, but we are not interested in this case, uh, at least now. And uh, then uh, when we perform our experiment, uh, we have our data. Uh, what data, what, what, what kind of data uh, do we have uh, in, in this experiment? So if we actually uh, conducted this experiment, what kind of data we obtain? Can we have and I mean, each, each side of the coin, perhaps? Um, yeah, but uh, what? Uh, okay, we we uh, we have data. Uh, actually, this data can be encoded. Okay, uh, under under my experiment, I understand uh, the following: that we uh, do this coin tossings, and parallel, uh, we we ask our magician to predict the results. And as the result of our experiment, uh, we have uh, actually it can be encoded in different ways. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have two possibilities. For example, we can encode this data as a sequence of correct and incorrect guesses. Sequence of results of guesses. Uh, like correct, correct, incorrect, correct, correct, incorrect, incorrect. Something like this. Uh, this is this is our data. This is the result of the experiment. This this log, uh, which uh, which tosses was guessed correctly and which tosses uh, wasn't guessed correctly, right? And uh, we can also summarize uh, this result uh, with, uh, for example, number of correct guesses. Which is actually the only number that we use in this uh, in this story. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our data generation process. Actually, um, we can think that uh, we can model this uh, guessing uh, this guessing. Uh, well, uh, we know that uh, we have some probability to make a correct guess. Uh, this is actually what is called uh, by our P. A and uh, we understand that we can model uh, our uh, sequence of guessings, uh, like just we have uh, a new coin. And on, on, one, uh, on one side of this coin, uh, we have uh, we have uh, correct, and on another side of the coin, uh, we have word incorrect. And uh, then we can model our guessing uh, by just flipping this coin. And we are interested in, uh, is it true that this coin is fair? And the fair, uh, I mean that probability uh, of correct guess is the same as probability of incorrect guess. Uh, uh, the same as uh, one half. So uh, this is a new virtual coin uh, that we use to model our experiment. Uh, so uh, we just, uh, we have probability of correct, uh, this is our P. And uh, we have two options. We have null hypothesis uh, that P is one half. So the coin is fair. And we have another option, uh, P is greater than one half. Uh, so the coin uh, is not fair. It's biased in favor of correct outcome. 
So basically, uh, what I say, uh, I say that now I can forget about my magician, uh, uh, forget about my uh, experiment uh, procedure, and, ju and just think about uh, the following, the following simple experiment. You have a coin, uh, and uh, you don't know uh, is it coin fair or not. And to answer this question, uh, you just uh, toss this coin several times, and count uh, how many times uh, you have. Uh, you have this correct outcome, and uh, then you can use this number to answer the question, is it coin fair or not? And uh, this new experiment uh, basically is equivalent to our initial experiment. Uh, is it clear or not? Uh, I'm just describing some rather abstract things, uh, and uh, I want I want it to be clear. Just ask me some questions if if anything is not clear. Is it clear? Or, hmm? Yes. I already forgot. Uh, why do we need it? Because what was previous? We still in our experiment uh, with magician. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we discussed. We, we discussed the following. Uh, the following experiment. When uh, we have a person who claims to be a, a magician, who claims to be, uh, to be able to predict future or look through the walls, and to test these abilities, we uh, asks. Uh, um, we ask this person, uh, to, predict uh, uh, outcomes of series of coin tossing. So we have some room where. Uh, our assistant tosses a coin several times, and uh, the magician have to predict the result of each tossing. And then we compare the prediction with the actual outcomes, and uh, count how many times uh, how many times the magician was correct and how many times the magician was incorrect. So uh, we have a, a kind of log. Uh, like uh, first time uh, the magician was correct. Uh, second time, the magician was incorrect. So each time uh, is just one coin tossing, and so on. For example, something like this. And uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, our initial uh, scheme of experiment. And we discussed previously that if we have uh, if we have um, so. Uh, it is easier uh, for a magician to be correct in approximately half of a tosses. If uh, even the magician will just uh, predict randomly uh, head or tail, then uh, probability to be correct is about one half. And uh, so uh, if, if there will be about half of uh, correct results, then uh, we will not conclude that uh, the magician uh, is actually a magician. Uh, but if we see that uh, the number of correct results uh, are um, rather large, compare it with uh, just one half of uh, the whole tries, the, the whole attempts, the whole number of attempts, uh, then we see that, uh, then we, we can conclude after appropriate investigation of the corresponding probabilities, uh, we can conclude that uh, the magician is probably actually uh, has some uh, paranormal abilities, at least we can conclude that uh, it is highly unlikely to obtain this result, uh, provided that uh, he doesn't have these uh, paranormal abilities. Uh, and so this, this this was the discussion of the previous lesson. And now I just want to uh, say that uh, we can restate our um, coin, uh, uh, our guessings, um, and the whole procedure of uh, the experiment, we can replace it with uh, a kind of uh, coin tossing again. But now uh, this coin is not the initial coin that uh, uh, provided us results like head or tail, but now it is a kind of virtual coin that provides result, uh, results correct and incorrect. And uh, our initial question uh, is it true that uh, the magician uh, really uh, has magical abilities? Uh, is restated in uh, the following way. We say that 
the magician uh, has some paranormal abilities. If uh, this virtual coin that gives us the results like correct or incorrect um, uh, has probability larger than one half to give us result correct. It means in terms of our initial experiment that the magician uh, will give us correct answers more often than just randomly. Is it more clear now? Yeah, maybe if you say why we need this abstraction. Well, uh, we uh, actually in we we often it is it is very convenient uh, way to restate um, different experiments and different processes uh, in terms of something very simple uh, like this coin tossing. Uh, for example, uh, just in, uh, uh, for example, after a while, uh, we will say, okay, um, we we study we study this sentence and uh, different words uh, were cho chosen in different parts of the sentence. Uh, let us uh, let us believe that uh, this uh, this the choice of uh, these words is uh, uh, driven by uh, something like a coin tossing. So we assume that, for example, each speaker just toss a coin uh, to select which word to use. For example, if uh, they choose between two alternatives. And um, due to the fact that this model is very simple and we can, um, we can answer a lot of questions about this simple model, about this uh, coin tossing, we uh, will be able to analyze the, the actual model about words or about something else. This is this is why I uh, I like to to restate some some things in, in this in this kind of example. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, are there other questions? I'm just wondering how it uh, can be so that coin is biased in favor of correct. Uh, uh, how uh, how can we uh, how can we understand that it is biased? Okay, if I give you a coin and you flip this coin, uh, for example, uh, one hundred times, and you see that all one hundred times uh, it lands uh, with um, uh, one side, for example, it it lands with head. Uh, then uh, you probably conclude that uh, this is not a fair coin. Because if it were fair coin, it should land one half of times, approximately one half of times with head and one half of times uh, with tail. No, I'm just not wondering how it can be possible. What should be? It, it's ah, a how coin. to how to how to construct how to construct uh, a coin uh, that uh, that is not fair? Yes. Well, okay, uh, I see, I see. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. <laughs> This is this is a kind of theoretical construct, but I believe that it is possible if you tweak with center of mass of this coin, or okay, or if you replace a coin with a cat. Yeah. <laughs> but it will be it will be a bit cruel, uh, I see. But um, probably you you have to add some uh, cat feature uh, to to a coin. So something like this. I I, I don't know. Uh, I, I heard I heard a story that some people in prisons uh, can construct this kind of coins, uh, and they do it with uh, some liquid uh, liquid metal inside. But mm -hmm. I don't know details. Uh, I, I I have never been in jail yet. Um, but uh, but uh, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, so, so this is just this is just a just an abstraction uh, about this fair and unfair coins. But we can imagine that it is possible. It is possible to construct an unfair coin. Okay. Uh, now uh, I want to discuss a, a, a different um, but also rather simple model, um, and a bit more universal model uh, that we will use to think about uh, different uh, probability uh, uh, probabilistic processes. Uh, 
let us talk about samples, samples and populations. Uh, let me consider the following experiment, uh, the following study. Uh, let me assume that uh, I'm interested in some question like, is it true that people in Moscow are, for example, taller than people in some different, uh, different uh, city like in St. Petersburg? Uh, so is it true? Uh, that people in Moscow are taller than people in St. Petersburg. So I assume that this is this is the question that uh, I'm interested in. Um, I don't know why, probably I'm interested in some nutrition effects and I know that people in Moscow eat um, more vegetables than in people in St. Petersburg and I'm interested in how vegetables uh, uh, affect growth or, or something like this. Not, not a linguistic study, but I think that uh, it is easier to think about something that is easy to measure, like uh, like height of different uh, different people, and um, can you propose uh, the how how would you how would you conduct this study? What if you what if you want to to answer this question? What will you do? First, you measure uh, everyone in the cities, or you look in some archives uh, and uh, uh, see this information for example i don't know uh, which I assume um, that you don't assume that you don't have access to any archives uh, you don't have any access to medical information and you have to measure everything by yourself so what is your design of your study probably choose a sample mm -hmm. because we can't really measure everyone. So, uh, for example, some uh, age group, mm -hmm. so that we do not have children and adults in the same sum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, of course, uh, it is um, okay. Basically, it is possible to measure everybody, but uh, to do so, we need uh, a lot of resources. Uh, government. Uh, from time to time, uh, conducts uh, conducts uh, something like um, well, they conduct censuses, but it is it is really really costly thing. So it is conducted by government uh, only uh, several times. Uh, I, don't know, I think one one time in ten years or something like this. And um, so we usually don't work with the whole the whole bunch of people. But we just we just select some sample, and uh, so this is uh, a very important step uh, that we will do now. Uh, so first, we select samples. Uh, in Moscow and in Saint Petersburg. Uh, so we recruit uh, some people and measure them. Measure their height. Uh, so we will get uh, just a sequence of numbers. Uh, for example, this can look like Moscow. Assume that uh, I pick uh, random people. So 
it is possible that uh, I have people of different uh, different ages. I'm I'm not interested specifically in adults or in children, but I'm interested in uh, the whole the whole um, set of citizens in Moscow and in Saint Petersburg. So I will have different number of uh, different uh, different heights. Probably something like this. For example, this is from Moscow, and uh, I have uh, another set of numbers. Something like this. I have two different sets of numbers. Okay, let me add, uh, uh, let me make uh, these samples not equal because it is not necessary. Um, something like this. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what will you do next? Okay, you have these numbers. This is, this is our data. Um, what will you do next? check if our samples are representative. Mm, let us discuss representativeness a bit later. Um, assume, assume that yes. Uh, whatever it means, assume that yes. Then what will be our next step? Take out one date from some business to make the amount of Moscow and the same business Asim. Uh, sorry, could you repeat, please? To pick out one bit from uh, St. Petersburg to make the number with the Moscow same or same. Uh, I don't think that we, uh, uh, I don't think that we need uh, our samples to be uh, of equal size. It is okay that number of people in Moscow is not the same as number of people in Saint Petersburg. Uh, so, uh, what is our next step? What will you do with these numbers to answer uh, this question? Is it true that people in Moscow are taller than people in Saint Petersburg? You should count the mean and the median, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should we should count some some. Uh, some statistics. Uh, we should count some 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 numeric value. Uh, that is a measure a measure of central tendency. Something like something like mm, yeah, mean, average, or median, or something like this. Uh, we will use uh, we will use average now. Just just a sample mean, uh, and we calculate. Uh, sample means. Uh, for people from Moscow. And since Petersburg. So. Um, so we have average for Moscow. Sample mean. I have to divide it by six. And uh, then I have mean for St. Petersburg. Okay, let me replace this number with something different like. So uh, I have to find two averages. 
and okay uh, let me uh, uh, let me use my computer to find these averages So this is 136, not a very realistic numbers, but that's for illustration purposes only. Okay. Let me fix uh, this sample a little bit more. Uh, I'm sorry for this uh, cheating, but uh, I just uh, want to make these numbers appropriate for my next question. So, Okay, uh, mostly done. This is Okay, uh, assume that my data, uh, assume that my initial data is like shown, uh, like shown now and not what, uh, what it was initially. Uh, so uh, we see that after we calculated uh, this, these averages, we have uh, 162 for St. Petersburg and 163 for Moscow. Uh, is it enough to conclude that people in Moscow are taller than people in St. Petersburg? So we obtained this data, then we found these averages, and we found that uh, average for people in Moscow for our data is 163, and for St. Petersburg it is 162. Uh, can we claim that people in Moscow are taller than people in St. Petersburg? We should find if the difference in one centimeter is significant in our case. Yes, but what does it mean? Uh, can we claim based on our data? that one centimeter is um, inside of our, is to the right of our threshold and not mm -hmm. inside of 5%. Mm -hmm. um, on that. Okay, um, what stops you from, the, fr from, just, from just claiming that this is true? Uh, we see, we clearly see that uh, the result here is larger than the result here. Uh, why not just to say, okay, our data shows that people in Moscow are taller than people in St. Petersburg. We see it, we see it in data. Well, probably because our samples are limited and they do not reflect like all the citizens of both cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what can happen? Um, um, what can happen if we repeat this experiment? Uh, for example, some other uh, some other researchers or maybe we 
um, but a year later or sometime later, uh, we'll repeat this experiment. Again, we uh, recruit uh, people in Moscow, recruit people in St. Petersburg, and uh, what can happen with our results. Assume that, assume that there is some uh, other research group that do exactly the same thing that we do. They uh, also recruit the same, with, using the same, using the same procedures. Uh, they recruit people, but of course it is possible that they will recruit different people. This is just a kind of random things. Uh, what, what can happen in this case? Uh, I wanted to say that I think that if uh, we have a difference just one centimeter, it's not a significant difference, mm -hmm. and maybe it's not even worth counting as a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, but uh, but assume that you have difference in one centimeters, uh, and you are looking for some really subtle effect. And um, what you do is you collect a lot of data, not just six elements here and seven elements here, but I uh, think um, hundreds of thousands people here and hundreds of thousands people here. Uh, will you uh, treat this one centimeter distance, one centimeter centi difference between these two, uh, between these averages, uh, as not significant in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still, I, I do not know now, because mm -hmm. I think you hint that we should pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, uh, my, my point is that uh, it is not uh, very clear how to define, uh, uh, how to, to define uh, what is, um, which difference, which different difference is interesting and which difference is not interesting. And actually at this and the next lecture, we will discuss a way how to do it. And uh, now I just want to, uh, to say that it is possible for us, uh, for example, to repeat this experiment and obtain different values. And it is possible that when we will repeat it, we will have different uh, numbers here and different numbers here. And it is possible that uh, the relation between uh, these two averages will be different just because uh, we accidentally uh, has taller person in St. Petersburg than in Moscow sample just, just, just by chance. So uh, I just want to stress that here in this kind of research, we also uh, we also meet with a problem that is similar to the problem that we discussed here. We have to understand. Um, we have some. We, we see some. We see some result. We, we see some effect. Uh, in this case, our effect is that this number is larger than this number. But uh, we have to understand: is it really something that uh, was uh, worth our attention, or it is uh, a kind of just a result of randomness, just some kind of fluke. Um, so we have to distinguish between some kind of systematic effects and random effects. And uh, this is this is what we will be do now. So uh, my main point here is that the answer for this question is not obvious. We cannot just immediately just immediately look at these numbers and claim that yes, we see we see a difference, but because this difference is rather small, and it is possible that if another group uh, will do the same experiment, they will get different results, and we want our results to be, in a sense, reliable. We want our results to to be reproducible. We want that if the other group will uh, uh, do the same thing as we uh, did, uh, they uh, most probably will uh, get the same result. Okay. 
Uh, now let us uh, discuss uh, how to use probability theory for this kind of problems. And first of all, uh, I'm interested in this sample selection uh, process. When we say that we select samples, what does it mean? Uh, in my current model, uh, I will believe that I pick, when, uh, when I do this sample selection, uh, I will pick every citizen of an appropriate city with equal probabilities. So all of them uh, have uh, the same chances to, uh, to enter our sample. And uh, this is uh, what can be called representativeness in statistical terms. So, Uh, we want to make a sample. To make our samples by random choice of citizens of a particular city and all citizens uh, have equal chances uh, to enter our sample. So every citizen of Moscow uh, has equal chances to enter Moscow sample as any other citizens of Moscow and the same thing for St. Petersburg. Uh, this is what usually called uh, representativeness. Uh, what, this is what makes uh, our sample representative because if we have, uh, for example, if probability that uh, children um, can uh, become member of our sample is larger than for uh, adults, uh, then our sample will not be representative. Uh, we will have a lot of children, uh, unproportional number of children in our sample than uh, adults. So we want uh, we want some kind of equal uh, equal probability of uh, all citizens to be members of our sample. Uh, this is uh, this is very non-trivial question on how can we uh, do it, but. Uh, this is uh, this is a question for probably another course uh, about uh, about principles of uh, sociological research. But uh, now we just uh, assume that uh, this condition is satisfied, uh, that uh, all people are chosen with equal probabilities. And after that, we can replace uh, our sample selection process with a simple model. Uh, so we do the following model. Uh, let me draw uh, a large box and I have a lot of balls uh, in this box. And each ball uh, represents uh, one citizen of uh, some particular city. For example, this, this box represents Moscow. And every uh, uh, ball has uh, some number uh, and uh, these numbers represents heights of people in Moscow. And so on. Uh, so uh, we have a very large box and uh, the number of elements in this box, the number of balls in this box uh, is equal to the number of uh, citizens of an appropriate city. So in this case, uh, this box contains uh, about 10 millions, uh, 10 millions balls. And each ball represents one person. And after that, uh, we believe that uh, we do the following um, sampling procedure. We just pick 
uh, pick random ball. Uh, with equal probabilities. And record uh, what is written on this ball. And um, so let me record this somewhere. And uh, then uh, I will return uh, this ball to uh, the box. And uh, then again, I uh, will shuffle the box, and uh, I will pick uh, another uh, another random uh, random value. So another random ball, and I will record uh, the value that is written on this ball, and so on. I can continue this several times. And then uh, I will get uh, a sequence of numbers. And uh, this sequence of numbers is, is what actually called sample. And uh, this ball, uh, this, uh, this box with balls, uh, what is called population. So uh, we make sampling from some population and we assume that uh, these uh, elements in our samples are obtained by this random choosing with replacement. So after we chose uh, a ball, we, we return it to the box and do again our, our shuffling. Uh, it means that every time the result of every of every picking of every selection is independent on the result of uh, all other pickings because uh, we have the same the same population every time and we shuffle uh, this box uh, every time so there is no any connection between uh, the value of this number and the value of this number this is how uh, our sampling procedure works and this is our main model for all future statistical uh, research that we will do. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, so, uh, you see that every sample, um, we believe that every sample is not just a series of numbers, but this is a series of, of numbers that obtained by this uh, selection procedure from some population. Uh, uh, we use term population not uh, exclusively for uh, population that consists of people, but we use this term population for just a model of this uh, box uh, with uh, these balls and we have a number or probably not number but something different but uh, anyway something is written on uh, on every ball and uh, we call this uh, we call this box uh, a population okay uh, now uh, what uh, i want to do is uh, the following uh, Um, I can think about uh, this box with uh, with these balls as a very long list of numbers. And I can try to understand something about my population. Assume for a second that I have I have this population. I know every every number on each ball. Uh, then uh, I can find uh, a lot of uh, a lot of, things that are related to this population. Uh, for example, we can find, uh, so if we know the whole population, uh, we can uh, 
uh, find different values uh, various values uh, that describe this population Uh, for example, we can find uh, population mean uh, or population variance uh, or even draw, even plot uh, the histogram of population. Uh, then, uh, what we are interested in? Uh, we are interested in the following. If uh, we know that uh, this sample is obtained uh, using this uh, selection process from the population, uh, we assume, and this is actually justified by some mathematical results, by some mathematical theorems, that properties of sample um, somehow are related to the corresponding properties of population. For example, we can try to uh, we can try to estimate population mean, so mean uh, mean height uh, of all uh, citizens of Moscow by looking at the sample. This is actually quite reasonable, due to the fact that all elements here uh, have. Uh, equal chances to enter our sample, uh, we can expect that our sample, uh, in fact, is, is, is representative. It means that uh, we have different people in this sample of different, of different uh, ages, of different uh, sexes, of different uh, educations, and so on. And uh, we can reasonably assume that the proportion of people for example, of different ages in our sample is similar to that of population. So we can reasonably assume that uh, sample is in fact uh, representative, provided that our, uh, our sampling procedure works like, like discussed. But of course, it is possible for our sample to deviate from, from, this, from this representativeness. Uh, of, especially if our, our sample is small. And we can uh, find, uh, theoretically, uh, the probability of these deviations. And this is what we will do now. Uh, so we want to use... Uh, to use properties of sample. like sample mean uh, to estimate corresponding properties of population. So for example, to estimate uh, to estimate uh, mean height of people in Moscow, I can obtain uh, my sample from citizens of Moscow and find uh, average of the sample, sample mean. And now let us discuss uh, how far um, properties of sample can deviate uh, from the corresponding property, from the value of corresponding property of population.
So uh, to, to answer this question, let us consider some very simple example. Uh, for example, let us assume that our population uh, is just a box uh, with, for example, three balls. I have three balls, uh, like one, two, and six. And nothing more. Uh, this is unrealistically simple example, but uh, it is easier to, to work with this. Uh, first of all, can you say me uh, what is population mean? Can you find it? It's three, three. Yeah, population mean is three. One plus two plus six over three. 9 over 3 is 3. Uh, now uh, let us assume that I will take a sample uh, from, this, uh, from this box and uh, I will find an average of values in this sample. So I will find just a sample mean and uh, I'm interested in uh, which values can this sample mean uh, can take and uh, with what probabilities. Um, I will use different number of elements in the sample. So basically, I will do the following experiment now. Um, I want to talk about, uh, I want to discuss probabilities uh, of obtaining this or that sample. Uh, it means that uh, I want not only to make one sample, but I want to repeat this sampling procedure several times. And each time I will obtain uh, its own sample. And then I will count how many times uh, I will obtain this sample and how many times I will obtain that sample. So uh, consider samples of different sizes. Uh, begin with n equals to 1. Uh, which sample can I obtain uh, if uh, my sample size is 1? So how many different samples uh, I can obtain uh, if n equals to 1? Three samples? Only three different samples, yeah. I can obtain sample uh, one, I can obtain sample two, and I can obtain sample six. So, uh, this is because my sample size is just one now. So, this is sample. And let me find sample mean for each sample. Uh, so, if my sample is one, what does sample mean? Well, the same number. Yeah, of course. If I have just one number, then if I, if I have just one number in the sample, then uh, I will have uh, this number is equal to its own its own mean. Uh, so uh, I have sample means one, two, and six. Now let us consider samples of size two. So let n equals to two. And again, I want uh, the same experiment. Uh, I have different, uh, different samples that I can obtain. And I have uh, different sample means. Uh, so, uh, how many uh, how many samples can we obtain now? Different samples. Uh, can you please uh, send uh, your answer to private messages? Just enumerate all samples that we can obtain in this case. Let me begin. Uh, we can obtain sample one one. 
And what about all the other samples? Or you can send me the the number of samples that you will obtain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, sorry, uh, I have a question. So yes. um, um, I have thought that we um, we have uh, only three balls, and uh, yes. one ball is one, uh, second two, yes, exactly, uh, third yes. is uh, six. Yes. So uh, uh, how can we get uh, one and one? Because um, we just uh, took that box, put it, uh, took yeah, that ball, put it out of the box, and uh, so it is no more in the box. Or... We, have, we have sampling with replacement. Uh, yeah. uh, we have sampling, oh, okay, with, yeah. sampling with replacement, so we re return our box uh, to, uh, return our ball to the box every time. Um, but with, with the real people, um, it would be like, Strange yeah, what, because if we measure yes, uh, yeah, three yeah, times correct. one person, yes, it is correct. Uh, it is correct. Uh, but um, uh, in in reality, you have uh, a very large uh, samples. Uh, sorry, you have a very large populations, and so uh, the difference between sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement is very tiny. So if you do Usually, usually people do sampling uh, without uh, replacement, but it is a bit different. Uh, but it, it is a bit difficult to uh, analyze uh, this sampling scheme, and uh, in practice, it doesn't make uh, much difference because probability to select randomly one person twice, if you, for example, select a random persons from Moscow from ten mil uh, from ten millions of people, is uh, extremely small. Uh, so um, now we assume that we select, uh, we, we, we can select uh, them both. If you are unhappy with this interpretation, you can, uh, you can think uh, about these balls, not um, in terms of particular peoples, but uh, assume that each ball represents some large group of people. For example, these are babies, uh, these are children, and these are adults. And in this case, uh, they, okay, more or less all babies have similar properties like height. And then you can say that uh, if, you return, if you obtain the same number twice, it means that you have just two children in your sample. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but in a small sample, uh, it, uh... Uh, it kind of reminds me uh, of a joke where a mother uh, needs to wash her twins and he, uh, she washes one of the twins twice and uh, one of the twins uh, is unwashed. Yeah, but uh, so here the same with uh, the height. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I see yeah, in, the, mm -hmm. uh, in the number of Moscow, it, it is not significant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I see several correct answers. Uh... But probably it is possible that I want to see more answers, correct or incorrect. Uh, note that uh, when we consider these samples, uh, we have to take into account an order. So, for example, a sample uh, one two is not the same thing uh, as a sample two one. Uh, so we have to count them separately. Mm, but the mean is uh, 
the yes. same yes that's correct mm -hmm. yes that's correct but uh, but uh, this is important to uh, take into account uh, the fact that this is that these are two different samples because when we will try to understand their probabilities we, we have to take into account that there are two ways to obtain the same uh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so uh, you see that um, we have we have nine samples. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it is a rather simple combinatorial questions uh, question because uh, we can select first element in our sample uh, using three different options. And uh, after that, we can select the second uh, element in our sample using, again, three different options. So we have to multiply three and three and obtain ten uh, and, and obtain nine, uh, nine elements. One, 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 two, one, three, two, one, two, 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 three. Um, Three one, three two, three three. And now let us find a uh, mean of each sample. So for my first sample, uh, the mean is just one. Uh, here is uh, the mean is one and a half. Here is again, uh, it is one and a half. Here is two two, uh, two and a half, two, um, two and a half, and finally a three. Well, sorry, I forgot what is N? What does it stand for? N equal to? Uh, n equal two is a uh, sample size. So we have uh, two elements in each sample now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, why, hmm? why do we have one, two, and three, and not one, two, and six? Oh, sorry. I see. I was just not, uh, okay, 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 okay. Not, not. It was my mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, one, this we should replace. Uh, we should replace six. Uh, three with six, of course. Um, yeah, and uh, we have to we have to change averages as well. So one plus six. This is three point five. Um, this is four. This is four, and this is 3.5, and this is four. Okay, uh, everything is correct now? We need one more sample, six and six. Six, six right, yeah, thank you. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I'm interested in now is distribution of these sample means. So, I'm actually interested in, in these numbers. I want to understand um, how likely it, uh, for example, to obtain sample mean one under this procedure, under this multiple sampling procedure. Uh, what is probability uh, to obtain sample mean uh, that is equal to one? Uh, 
how often uh, would I get sample mean equals to one if I would perform the same procedure a lot of times? Uh, I mean, if I would if I would generate these new samples a lot of times, and how often I will get this sample mean one? One over nine, yeah. Because I have only one way to to obtain this this number one. And uh, the overall uh, number of uh, samples here uh, is nine. Okay, uh, let us pick something different. For example, what is probability to obtain sample mean that is equal to four? Mm, I have two, six, two times. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, then I lost, uh, I lost one option. Um, which option? Uh, I lost option two, two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, sample mean uh, sample mean uh, four. Uh, we have probability to obtain this sample mean that is equal to two over nine. Uh, so we see that uh, we have two ways to obtain this four. We can obtain it using six uh, six two or two six, but we have only one way to obtain uh, value one. Only one one. Uh, so uh, I want uh, I want to draw several histograms. Uh, you will actually do that uh, at the practical lessons, uh, but let us start uh, by uh, drawing them just by hands. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to draw. Uh, a histogram for population. So this is population. And we have one, two, and six. And uh, I will draw a histogram like this. I have only three numbers, and they uh, they are located like this. Then uh, I can draw uh, a histogram for sample means. With n equals to one. So for for these values. And it will be the same as the population, which is quite trivial. Now, uh, let us uh, consider this, this case. Again, I want to draw uh, a histogram but now I have uh, much more numbers. Let me copy these numbers somewhere here. So I have one here, I have um, two, I have uh, one and a half. Actually, this is two times. I have uh, six one time. I have 
four, actually two times, and I have 3.5, so it is somewhere here. Uh, 3.5, actually two times. So uh, now my histogram uh, looks like uh, the following. I have small value here. Okay, I have to put uh, one and a half to one of the beans. Let me assume that uh, I will have beans like this. And uh, I will get the following histogram. Something like this. So I have a probability here to be smaller. So I have a small number of points here and I uh, and small height of the rectangle here. And here I have much larger probability and because I have four numbers uh, about that are close to four. Uh, actually, four and three dot five, and I have large rectangle here. So this is n equals to two, and this is the result of our calculations that we did uh, previously. Uh, now uh, I ask a question and uh, we will make a 10 minutes break and after this break I think uh, I will tell uh, uh, I will take uh, about 10 minutes uh, from the practical lessons uh, and we finish uh, this part and then we can uh, do the same thing uh, and uh, various other things in, in in our practical lesson. So my question is how this picture will will look like for n equals to three. So you can think about it and uh, we will return to this question in 10 minutes.
Okay, so we can continue. Uh, so, uh, I have a question uh, about how different uh, different sampling procedures called. Uh, so, if you uh, if you return. Uh, if you return uh, the selected ball to uh, the box, and then uh, this this thing is called sampling with replacement. Uh, so this is sampling with replacement. По русски выбор возвращения. And uh, if we don't uh, return a uh, ball to the box every time, uh, then it is called uh, sampling without replacements. Uh, Wait, replacements. Uh, so let us continue. So um, let me return to my question. Uh, what if uh, instead of selecting samples of size two, uh, I would select samples of size three. Uh, how this picture will will look like? How this uh, distribution of sample means uh, will look like? Uh, any ideas? Mm -hmm. So we can actually calculate uh, all the options. There will be 20 sem, uh, 27, uh, 27 elements. Uh, but uh, I don't want to do it uh, right now. It is a bit time consuming exercise. Uh, and uh, I just want to discuss uh, the, general, uh, the general expectations. Um, what should we expect? Uh, for example, let us consider this these parts. Uh, what can we say about the probability to obtain uh, average one, sample mean one? What is probability to obtain sample mean one uh, for n equals to three? Still one probability. Mm, probability one. So you would obtain this every every time. Uh, why every time? Oh yeah, probability. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm asking about probability. So you have to find number of times uh, when you uh, can uh, can obtain it. So like one here because we have only one. Uh, row here and divide it by the overall number of uh, rows here, overall number of possible options. Uh, so we have how many different uh, different samples? Um, at the first step, I can choose uh, one, two, or six. And uh, on the second step, I again choose uh, between one, two, uh, and six. And, and at the third step, I again can choose between one, two, and six. For example, this is one, one, one sample. This is one, one, two. This is one, one, six. And uh, it is easy to see from this kind of picture that Every, every time when I add another step, uh, the number of uh, options uh, is tripled. So I have 
I have three options here, I have nine options here, and I have 27 options here. So three, three times three, three times three times three. Uh, so we have uh, we have 27 different samples and only for one sample, specifically one, 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 I have sample mean one. So probability to obtain sample mean one equals to one over 27, which is quite low if we compare it with one third or uh, even one ninth. So we have small number here. And what about six? It is uh, the same, yes, because we have six, uh, six, six, only one time. Yeah. So this is one over 27 here and one over 27 here. Okay, and um, where are the majority of points uh, will be located? Around three, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere, uh, somewhere near number three, because actually the majority, the majority of points. Um, for example, it is uh, we have a lot of ways to obtain uh, to obtain uh, mean three. We can do it like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. One, two, three, four. Like this, or like this. Uh, actually, we have six uh, ways to to obtain number three here as mean. Uh, so at number three, we have uh, we have somewhere here we have number three, and uh, we have rather large rectangle here. And uh, in fact, to, to, to say roughly, uh, we, will, we will get something like this. I'm not sure about the actual picture for n equals to three. Uh, we, can, uh, we can draw it exactly using R, uh, using some simulations uh, in R, uh, but uh, it will look like this. We have small probability uh, to have uh, values which are far from three and we have a large probability to obtain value that is equal to three or close to three. So look, uh, extreme values that are, uh, that are far from the, the number three, actually number three is our population mean. This is actually population mean. Uh, the extreme values are highly unlikely. And values which are close to uh, the actual population mean uh, becomes uh, more and more frequent, becomes more and more likely uh, when we increase uh, number of elements in our sample. Again, this is quite reasonable because the larger sample we have, uh, the better it approximates the population. And uh, so uh, to, to summarize, I, I want to say the following. Uh, if we increase uh, uh, the distribution of uh, sample averages, sample means, Uh, would become more and more, more and more narrow uh, 
and located near the population mean. So I mean the following. Uh, we have our population mean, like number three here. And uh, if n would be large, uh, the distribution that we will obtain will be like this. We will get, um, okay, we have one here and six here. We would get extremely small values here. And uh, even here, we also uh, would get small values, rather small values. But uh, if we are close to uh, this value three, we will get uh, the distribution that is located like like this. So uh, I it if I if I replace uh, this histogram with uh, something more more smooth curve, it will look like this. And uh, the larger n we have. Uh, the more compact it would be around number three. So it would be like like this one for really large n. So uh, this distribution concentrates around number three. It is possible to obtain uh, values, for example, here or here, but it is very unlikely. The probability of this event is very small. Uh, for example, if you have n equals to 10, to obtain uh, this value, you have to get a ball with number six every time. All 10 times, you have to get ball number six. And the probability is very small. So we almost have no values here or here, but we have a lot of values here, near number three. And uh, this is uh, the main uh, the main fact that uh, I want uh, that I want to discuss today. We will use this fact uh, on the next lecture to answer uh, the question that we stated uh, here. We will. Uh, we will uh, discuss the actual procedure that uh, allows us to answer the question like this uh, with statistically correct and statistically uh, rigorous way to, to answer the question uh, which what difference we need how how large difference we need uh, to conclude uh, that um, for example, people in Moscow are taller than people in St. Petersburg. And we will use this distribution of averages to, to answer this question. So now we can uh, switch to practice uh, if, if there are no questions. Are, are there any questions about, about this part? Mm, I have a small question. So yeah. if we get six, uh, does it mean that we are wrong? So, uh, but I, because it, it doesn't, yes? So if we uh, measure everyone in Moscow, St. Petersburg, we, we get six, it is uh, statistically unlike, uh, unlikely. And so what do we do? We measure everyone uh, we, again? We, uh, and, uh, well, uh, well uh, all statistical implications uh, we will discuss on the next, on the next lesson. Now I just want, uh, I just want you to understand how, how this thing work. Uh, so uh, I want you to show how changes uh, the distribution of these sample averages as you increase number of elements in your sample. How to apply it to our statistical problem, uh, we'll discuss it uh, on the next lecture with all the details and all the uh, precautions uh, that are needed here. Okay, yeah, thank you. So actually this fact uh, that uh, I use here uh, is called central limit theorem. just um, so just ju just to name it I uh, I did not um, state this theorem uh, exactly but the idea is that the shape of this of this curve tends to some limit 
uh, and uh, this limit uh, is is just something something that is known. But uh, the the main idea that uh, we have to use is that the concentration uh, becomes more and more close to our number three. It's called normal distribution. Uh, yes, a, a kind of limit distribution that can be obtained or uh, that can be obtained from this procedure. Uh, it's called normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. Uh, we uh, at, at the practice, uh, we will uh, draw the corresponding uh, figure, uh, figures and see that this theorem actually holds. So at the beginning, like here, the distribution can be rather far from the normal distribution, but um, when you increase sample size, it becomes more narrow and more look like uh, look like this bell-shaped curve, something like this, but more and more narrow. So you have to stretch it and and make like like this. Okay, I'm not a very good drawer here. Uh, not uh, not as good as R. Um, so the main uh, the main idea or uh, the main the main thing that you have to uh, to take from this lecture is the understanding of uh, what what we draw here on these pictures and why we believe that we have very small probability here and here. So these are two main uh, two main ideas that you have to take from this lecture. Okay, so I believe we can switch to, to practice. So uh, I think that uh, it is a good uh, a exercise for the practice to reproduce this, uh, exactly these um, pictures uh, just to begin with. Okay. So, Ivan? Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Do you hear me? Uh, can I ask, we will discuss only, I mean, we won't discuss the second task, which was our second homework, I mean. Uh, I think uh, we can discuss it a little bit. Uh, I think uh, that we have enough time to draw uh, the pictures that are related to today's lecture. And if uh, time permits, then uh, we can return to the previous lesson, yes. Thank okay. mm -hmm. I think it is better to begin with these pictures just because it is uh, closely related to uh, today's lecture. Mm. Mm. Ah, okay, so we start with this picture, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay, okay. So exactly this one. I, I, could you please show this picture again because... Um, yeah. I mean, this is distribution, ju just a distribution of sample mean without yeah. any without any rescalings. And now that uh, I specifically fix uh, the range of horizontal axis, so it is the same for, for all. So our population uh, is uh, just one to one six. six, right? One, one to six, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so let's start uh, with creating a vector. Uh, I hope that everyone uh, remember how to do that. Uh, one, two, and six. And let's call it our. Uh, uh, you didn't oh, share your screen. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Population. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, have a sample from this uh, population, there is a function of sample. Uh, and let's have a look how it works because, uh, yeah, we can even try uh, to do it without any uh, setting any parameters. Let's see how it works. And we get something. Uh, what do you think? Is it a uh, Sample uh, with replacement or without replacement. 
sorry. It's hard to tell, it can be both. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because I, I don't remember either actually. Uh, so in case you, you, don't, you don't know and you're not sure how the function works, uh, please see, it, uh, see how it works in help. So question mark and sample. So you get this. So, okay, let's have a look how it works. So uh, the first parameter is x is a vector of one or more elements from which to choose or a positive integer. Okay, so uh, it works in two different like, uh, ways. So uh, if the first, uh, the first parameter x is a vector, it creates a sample from the vector. You don't know anymore. Uh, if it is a, uh, just a number, let's say eight, uh, it creates actually a vector from one to eight. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, it samples from this vector from one to x, if x is a simple number, single number. Uh, okay. Let's return to population. Let's see other parameters. Uh, and a positive number, the number of items to choose from. Uh, number of items to choose. Ah, no, okay. So uh, here we need, uh, we need to uh, put uh, size. Uh, so we can set it as a one, for example, yeah, non uh, negative integer uh, during the number of items to choose. So, for sample uh, function, uh, we need to put size. Okay. So, yeah, if you put it like one, so we get only one number. Uh, and yeah, we have a parameter replace that is false by default. Should sampling be with a replacement? So it means that by default, uh, sample function returns without replacement. So if you want to do uh, with replacement, because we actually do it with replacement, we set replace to true. Right. Uh, and uh, right, we can uh, plot, we, we can do some. Uh, uh, simulation, like we get several samples uh, from this uh, population and uh, plot the results. And here you can do it like in different ways. So uh, like maybe if you're more familiar with Python, in, in this uh, step you want to do it uh, with uh, four loops. And let's see how it works in R. So, uh, first, we need to um, uh, create a, uh, create a uh, vector uh, with empty, like empty ve uh, vector with NAs or zeros uh, to do some prolocation matter. So uh, let's just create, a, let's create, let's do 1000 simulation, 1000 simulation. So our vector of uh, uh, sample means, right? Sample means, our vector of sample means uh, will be uh, uh, just 1,000 of zeros. Again, we can actually, we can actually skip this uh, step uh, it just recommended to do because if we uh, uh, if we if we create a, a vector and then we add uh, to this vector one value uh, each time, it will be uh, much longer to do. It's just some computer science trick, uh, so that you need to know. Uh, okay, and now we can run a. a uh, run a uh, for loop. Actually, I forgot how to do it, but I will try. Why 
Mm. Uh, sample means. No, let's do it like that. One, two, in. Uh, sample means I uh, is like this string, right? Population. Okay, so, so we like repeat this uh, simulation uh, 1000 times, and every time we record uh, the result uh, in uh, in our sample means vector. I hope everything is correct, and let's try. Because actually, I'm not sure about what I do, uh, and I explain later why. Okay, we get some some meaningful results. So uh, we get many uh, repetitions of uh, six, one, and two, and now we can create a histogram. Draw a histogram. Sorry, may I ask you a question? Yep. Um, I wonder what is the the um, rep function for? So ah, I don't understand okay. what do we even do it? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Rep function is a function uh, that creates uh, some creates a numerical or non-numerical character vector, logical vector uh, that actually repeats some uh, value several times. So for example, if you uh, use rep one comma five, uh, it will return uh, one 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 one. Uh, actually, you can do much more complicated things with uh, this uh, function because it's a really nice function. Uh, for example, we can do uh, it on a vector. And in this case, uh, what do you expect to, to, to have actually? What do you think? So this creates a vector of one. Ah, sorry. Yeah, I run, uh, um, I run everything uh, uh, at once. OK. Uh, yeah, it's like that, uh, and yeah, in, yeah like uh, in Python, people usually use this like four loops uh, inside the brackets for creating lists and so on. Um, yeah, uh, but okay, we'll return later to how to improve actually what we uh, wrote there. Uh, okay, so return to let's return to rep function. So uh, yeah. Uh, this is the vector of one to three, and with the function rep, we can re repeat this uh, five times, for example. Or you can do an even more complicated thing. Uh, for example, if the second argument in the function rep is a vector two, uh, and if it is a vector of the same length as the first vector, uh, it will be repeated in the way you will see. So the first value of the first vector uh, uh, repeated uh, like uh, the times uh, from the uh, first value of the second vector. So one is repeated once, two is re repeated twice, and three uh, is repeated three times. Uh, it's very it's very helpful function. So I mean, rep function rep is really nice. Uh, and it's better to know this function than to not know. So, okay. I hope you understood what it uh, does here. So let's do it again. Uh, it just creates uh, creates uh, 1000 zeros here. And again, why we do that? Because uh, if we uh, start, for example, with a, a vector of length one or of length zero, and uh, for every iteration of loop, we increase this vector. Uh, computationally speaking, it's very long because every time R needs to find a place of memory for the new vector, and it's very, very long. Uh, it will be much faster if we do, if we allocate memory uh, uh, using this way of creating a vector with some value inside, and then we uh, replace this value with some uh, other uh, values from our solution. So that's why we do that. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, I ask you one other question. Yeah. 
So, so oh, does it mean that even in Python, we should avoid to use a band to add new elements to an array in such a situation? Mm, actually, I, I cannot say about, I'm sorry, I cannot say about uh, this thing in Python because I'm not, I, I, I actually don't know. So may, uh, I think yes, but uh, I'm not sure because maybe it works somewhat different in Python. But actually what I wanted to show you, so yeah, we re recreated this, uh, uh, re recreated this uh, histogram. Uh, I think we can do even not like 1000, let's do it not 1000, like 3000. And let's see how it works now. Means and yeah, actually, uh, when we increase sample, it uh, it is more and more flat when we increase sample. So uh, before that, there were some differences. So one is uh, repeated something like uh, nine hundred something times, like like uh, uh, here it's like uh, nine hundred uh 80 maybe or something like that let's even check it with a table function sample means so yeah it's pretty close to 1000 but when we had not uh 3000 but uh 1000 or let's do it like not let's do it 300 right okay repeat it and uh Let's see the histogram so you can see the differences more. Uh, now it could be in different uh, ways different uh, the difference. Uh, so maybe one will be uh, more often more common result than two, for example. Uh, if we write it another time uh, another time, I think it can be like that. Oh, even six is higher. And you can see that there is more like uh, difference compared to this uh, like uh, population mean that. Uh, uh, um, what is size? It is the size of sample. Uh, yeah. So uh, first we uh, we uh, we start with a, a sample size one. So we have a, this uh, random variable, and we get like. A, n equal to one, and then calculate, calculate, uh, then we calculate mean of this one uh, um, item. So mean of one item is the same as this item. So we don't need to calculate mean, uh, even calculate mean here. So ideally, it will be like that. So it will be like mean. If it will be not like size one, but size two, for example. And okay, so it will be the same. So. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, uh, I want to show you like another way uh, of doing uh, the thing in R uh, because like uh, it, it existed that I need to show you four loops, but actually, for example, I work in R and I didn't use four loops. I haven't used four loops uh, in two years I think. Uh, because uh, it is not our way to use four loops. It seems to be a bit strange. But R is a very like uh, uh, is a is a uh, uh, is a programming language with a very strong function program, and uh, for loops is somewhat against this logic. So when we use for loops uh, in R, uh, okay, maybe if you are like uh, if you are more comfortable with for loops and you don't want to learn uh, that much of R things. That's okay, but like usually in our community, uh, like uh, it, it's something like a competition. There is something like a port, port with four loops, and you try to write it without uh, four loops. Uh, why? Because uh, four loops are actually usually a bit slower, or sometimes and sometimes uh, much slower. Uh, they are harder to write. I mean, at least it's harder to write it uh, like to make them fast you know uh and sometimes uh and usually it's just longer and it's it's ugly and you can do much more simple code much more efficient code without using, uh, uh, without using for loops or while loops or whatever 
Uh, and there are actually two main approaches to avoid for loops in R. Uh, first one is called vectorization. So I think you already know that uh, many operations in uh, R are vectorized, meaning that if you have two vectors, like n, one, two, five, and I'm sorry, not n. Okay, let's call it P and Q. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to uh, have element-wise uh, sum of these vectors, you don't need to use for loops. Of course you can, but actually writing just this will be faster uh, and it will be easier. It will be faster because this, uh, this uh, sum operation in R uh, is, uh, of course, somewhere inside it is a loop, but this loop is written in C, not in R. And C is a more like a basic language, to, uh, lower, uh, lower scale language. So, and it's faster. Uh, so it's better to use, uh, in many cases, you can avoid four loops just with vectorized operations. So if you want to uh, sum two vectors, you just write P plus Q and you get the vectorized uh, element uh, wise uh, sum of this vector. If you want to calculate, for example, uh, square root of uh, many numbers of some vector, uh, you don't need to uh, iterate by these uh, values in the vector. You just write uh, S to RT uh, one to uh, of, of this vector, and you get uh, like element-wise application of uh, this uh, function to the vector. But in some cases, uh, functions are not vectorized. For example, if you write a function. Uh, and you didn't vectorize it, so you didn't make it work with uh, vectors, not uh, vectors, not only one single value. Uh, or in some, like, in some cases, there are some cases that functions are not vectorized. And in this situation, uh, you may think about using for loops, but again, you can avoid it. And how? You have an apply family of functions. Uh, apply it's something like a map function in uh, Python. Uh, so you can compare it to, to, to that. So in this case, uh, for example, I think it's maybe uh, not the best, uh, not the best actually example. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, take an example from empty cars. Empty cars is a uh, uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, easily convert it to matters because uh, this column is not actually a column, it's just uh, names of the rows uh, and all columns are numeric. So you can convert it to numeric and you can work it with uh, this uh, data frame as it was a matrix. Okay. Uh, and, and for example, you want to calculate something for every row. And for example, you want to calculate mean of some, whatever. And in this case, you uh, use apply function uh, and you uh, set this matrix and you, or something that could be converted to matrix. Uh, empty cars. Uh, then you select rows or columns. For rows, you have one. For columns, you have two. We want to do something by rows, right? So that's why we use one. And then a uh, function that you want to apply for these rows. Uh, and when I say function, I mean not a, a like a, uh, not a character value in square brackets. I mean function. So in this case, you actually apply function as an argument in a function. 
let's uh, see how it works. So for example, you can apply mean or whatever you want, uh, like mean and get actually mean values. It's a bit, a bit uh, strange actually uh, for, for in this case for rows calculation means maybe, but okay, uh, it's not meaningful there, uh, but at least you can do it. Uh, and you can get mean value for each row. Uh, if you want to get a uh, mean value for each uh, column, uh, you, you can use the same, but uh, instead of one, you, you set two, meaning that you want to iterate by counts. Uh, actually, inside apply functions, Actually, uh, it will run something like a for loop inside, but it is much easier to use. It's much more beautiful, <laughs> I think. Uh, and uh, it is more in the like, logic of R using uh, functions apply and uh, others uh, for, uh, for this. Uh, for, for data analysis. Uh, and there are many functions in apply family. One another that is quite nice in the uh, laplace function. Apply function returns, uh, it, it, it's uh, similar to uh, apply function, but it, it, it is applied for a list and that's why you don't need uh, this like dimension selection. Uh, you just write a, a list and the function that will be applied for every uh, every uh, item in the list. Uh, let's see, uh, let, let's create some simple example. Let's create a list letters equal to letters. Uh, it's a letters as a, a built-in, uh, let's say, let, uh, letters is a built-in constant in R. Uh, it's A, B, C, D, and so on. Uh, numbers, no, no, one, two, ten. And logical, logic equal to uh, true. And let's call it L1. Ah, oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, one was taken for, uh, by, uh, okay, I, I, I told you this joke, right? Uh, about the black star and uh, Levan Garoy, no, sorry. Uh, let's just call it L1 and respect uh, uh, Russian rep uh, as, as it exists. Uh, okay. Uh, and let's see what we have in this vector L1. And for example, we want to calculate uh, length of each element in this vector. In this case, you use L1 and function length. So function length calculates a uh, length of this vector. So, and each element of this vector of this list is a vector. So it sounds like it iterates over this list uh, and return the result. Uh, Actually, you can do the same uh, with the function supply. Supply is more user, user friendly uh, function uh, than uh, something like a user friendly uh, version of apply. So, if a list apply, a apply is a list apply, uh, a supply stands for simplified apply. Uh, it just tries, uh, tries to simplify the result of the uh, of the calculation to a vector if it's possible. Actually, it's not, it's uh, it's something that easy to use when you want to get some easy results, but uh, it's something that you want to avoid in uh, production because uh, it is less reliable, you know, you don't want, you don't know what to expect from this function. Uh, would it be simplified or not? You don't know in advance, or you can, but it's much more uh, harder to know than with a simple Laplace function. Okay, so, uh, and another very simple function from this family, so it's uh, apply 
apply, supply, and also other functions like apply, 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 reply, uh, yeah, outer and replicate. So not without replicating the family, right? And actually, I think it's even more simple function than all these functions. Because what it does, it just repeats some operation, some line of code, several times, number of times that you you you, you said, right? We, we have so we have this um, n that equal to three hundred, okay, and and then you can just write this function uh, here inside without any creation of Simple means in advance, then it rings with the four loops and so on. Because I don't even, I'm not sure that I remember this uh, this four loop section. But this replicate is very simple. Uh, you just write this line, uh, and then you, you you get this result, right? You get a uh, sample from the population. Population is one to six. Uh, you get sample with the n1, n equal to 1. Uh, you get mean of the sample that actually does nothing in this case, in this particular, particular say, uh, case when size is equal to 1. Uh, and then you replicate the separation 300 times and you don't need four loops. Right? Cool. Uh, sample means. And you calculate it. And let's do table sample means. I really like this function replicate because replicate is basically mostly used for the simulation functions. And it's so nice that with R you can do very complicated uh, statistical simulations with just one line of code. So we can do some many. Uh, complicated uh, CLT simulation uh, with just one line of code, and it's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic because that's how I understand statistics. Actually, I do simulations. Uh, I, I mean, I, I believe simulations more than uh, formulas. It's my own way to understand things. Uh, maybe it's not the best way, but that's how I understand it. So. When well, I can see the proof of CLT, but it will, I will not believe it until I do it by my own hand with simulation. And it's very simple. So, uh, okay, now we can see this that we have pretty, I mean, obvious thing that we have. If we have, uh, if we have a uh, sample equal to one, the sample means. Uh, more or less like uh, follow uh, follow uh, uh, this population distrib distribution of population. Uh, yeah, if our maybe this uh, okay, I, I, I think I, I answered that. Uh, and as as n gets larger, we get uh, this uh, this. Uh, like line uh, to be more and more flat. Okay, let's even increase this uh, sample size uh, here. Not size, but the uh, number of replication. Okay, now let's go to another simulation. So let's uh, simulate that we have uh, equal size equal to two. In this case, this mean will change something. Uh, let's write it. It's a uh, skill, it's, it's pretty fast. Let's see a table of this value. So you, you get actually six uh, outcomes from one to six. And you can see that actually uh, some outcomes are more frequent than others. Mm, but actually, it's does it with replacement? So okay, that's that's kind of strange because I thought that it will be more 
two letters. Mm. So we have one, two, three. Ah, okay, maybe. Okay, let's uh, let's just do it. And we have this thing. We have something in the middle now. Uh, and again, let's do some uh, simulation with uh, more n. Uh, in this case, we have, uh, we'll have, yeah, we have 1.33 and so on. And we have many numbers of three because we have many like uh, uh, sequences, many outcomes where they means, uh, they mean some, by they mean will be uh, three. Like one, two, six, one, six, two, six, one, uh, and so on. Uh, and let's see a histogram. And now you can see that in this peak around three grows. Uh, okay, we can even uh, run a simulation of this higher end and see how it, how it changes. And let's do, let's increase it even more and see what happens. Yeah, with this number, we actually see something uh, pretty similar to a uh, bell curve from normal distribution. And this kind of magic, you know, like uh, in original data, like it was, there, there was nothing that, uh, uh, that resembles uh, normal distribution, just one, two, and six. How it uh, changes to normal distribution? Uh, and how this uh, 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 sample means uh, if we increase n uh, for, for uh, example, this uh, uh, bell curve uh, shape more and more with increasing sample size. Let's do it even like five. Okay, let's uh, let, let's delete it for now from here. We can even draw an animation, animation, but it will be a bit harder. Sorry, uh, five, six, seven, and with seven, we already have something uh, pretty similar, right? And then it's just more and more uh, follows the normal distribution. So in this case, you get, for example, with 13, you have a uh, very low uh, frequency of cases when you get uh, all six, uh, because you need to have like 13 uh, times uh, to have six. That is a, how to calculate what the probability of that. What is the probability in this case that sample mean will be uh, six? Write the answer, please, somewhere um, in the chat in, uh, in personal message is better. Uh, do you understand my question? So let me repeat it uh, once again. So uh, we have this like a population uh, that is a, yeah, I have a correct answer. Uh, we have this population and we sample from this population. Uh, that is one, two, and six. And uh, we have like randomly get number from this, uh, uh, population. Uh, so they have one third, uh, each value have, uh, has one third, uh, probability one third to be uh, to be outcome in this uh, sample. 
So what is the probability to get sample mean if we have sample uh, equal to 13? Sample size equal to 13. Try to think about it. You don't need to calculate it. I mean, you don't need to write me actually uh, the answer like numbers, just uh, like formula how to calculate it. Okay, uh, so to calculate it, you need to think like uh, in which case you, you can get sample mean equal to six. Actually, in only one case, when, uh, when you have uh, all these numbers in the sample, uh, they need to be six actually, because if uh, at least one of these numbers is uh, less than six, so it's one or two, uh, in this case, uh, this mean will be lower than the sample mean will be lower than, than six. That's why the only option to get uh, six as a sample mean, if your uh, sample size is 13, in this case, it is uh, get all six. In, so you, you need to get 13 times six. And because uh, like this sampling is independent and each time uh, you get it with a probability one third, need to one third uh, get to the power of 13. And you get this number. Uh, it actually means just very small number. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's see it in the, uh, in the figure that we have really uh, not so many cases of this, at least, well, uh, it seems that we have some, but it's actually, uh, it's actually just once, we have only one six. So yeah, it's pretty, yeah, you, you can even uh, multiply this number by, and get the probability of getting there of six. No, I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, let's uh, try uh, like higher sample sizes and with uh, uh, higher sample sizes, uh, you get this uh, uh, figure, you get this uh, histogram, uh, more and more uh, smooth with this like uh, shape of normal distribution. It's really, it's really, it's really magic, no? And you can even increase, but uh, actually after some point, changes will be actually quite low, right? So you don't have, you don't see actually so much changes from this to this in, in terms of shape. You have more numbers. No, no, not more numbers. Uh, you have still uh, 3,000 duplications. But actually, difference is not so big. And yeah. can I have a question? Yeah. Yeah. We always increase uh, si the um, size of the sample, but uh, what if we increase the number of experiments? It would mm -hmm. be the yeah, result? Question. That's, that's an excellent question because, like, uh, uh, the best way to understand these things, at least for me, is to try different things. Okay, what we, what if we run more simulation? Uh, first of all, 
not uh, uh, run from uh, 3,000 to 3 million because uh, it will just, it, it can break your computer. I mean, it will be, yeah, you can see that it does, we need to wait some time. We need to wait one to two seconds. Actually, it doesn't uh, change so much right here. So uh, uh, with uh, number of shades, uh, it doesn't change so much from some uh, after some number. And uh, actually, with number of replications, we just want to have as much as possible because uh, actually what we do here, we somewhat like we do some something like an approximation of sampling distribution. So uh, we have something like a very theoretical, very abstract, like imaginary distribution of sample means. Uh, so like, um, let me show you uh, this on another simulation. Shiny. I'm not sure that I will find the right one because there are many. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's this one. It's really nice. I need, uh, 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 I can show you. I can I can uh, send you a link. Uh, can I ask? Do we still work with? Uh, uh... Uh, our population, which is a one, two, and six, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, we still here. This population is still uh, one, two, six. I'm just wondering why we need so big n, if if we have just three numbers of our in our population. Uh, it's you know. Um, this big end, yeah, we can we have we can have a lower and yeah, uh, but with this uh, n with this number of simulations, we try to simulate a uh, sampling distribution when we have infinite number of n. So we something like a, well, uh, we, we just get uh, try to get here uh, as a large number as possible to like. To approximate infinity, you know, uh, and here, so it, so uh, this number of uh, replication just something like a technical uh, feature of the simulation, right? Uh, so we just want to get it as large as possible, uh, and we actually approximate the situation when we uh, calculated infinite number of things, and this. Uh, part is uh, theoretical because here we have really different shapes uh, when we have different uh, sample sizes. Right? And it will not change so much if we change a uh, number of uh, replications. Yeah, it will change something, but it will be not uh, not a change in the shape, but it will be changed in uh, like uh, precision. You know, with higher precision, uh, we have like uh, uh, results older to like real uh, situation. But yeah, it's Just important. That when we count samples, uh, we want to calculate less. Yes, that's why we take samples. But here we take samples and calculate for uh, more than 3,000 times. Sorry, could, could, you, could you repeat your question, please? Uh, when we take samples, we want to calculate less. Yes, that's why we take samples and not calculate just the mean. Yes? Uh... Mm, well, yeah, somewhat yes, but it's it's very theoretical thing actually here. Uh, we, we, what we actually want to know, we want to know how uh, how this uh, 
sample. Uh, so, uh, actually, what's important? Yeah, uh, we have some something like different like uh, entity here. We has uh, we have some uh, real distribution of some data. For example, it can be uniform. Like uh, so. In this case, uh, in this picture, it's a continuous distribution, but it actually, it doesn't matter so much. It can be uh, like, okay, so you can imagine that you get like uh, not a one to a six or not one to three, four, five, six, uh, uh, but it's, it's any number in between from one to six, for example. So it will be. Let's even say from one to six. Uh, yeah, and there is some real distribution in the population. Uh, we can get samples, and let's say we want some samples equal to four, right? Uh, let's do some bigger samples. Eleven, right? Uh, and here, like every, we can float every sample, right? Every sample. And every sample has some mean, like has some sample mean, right? So uh, there was some population, in population distribution, there was some, uh, like uh, some real mean of this distribution, some real standard deviation of this distribution. And now we get some sample from the distribution and we can calculate a uh, mean of this uh, sample. And in general, it will tend to uh, be closer to uh, mean in population, but it will be never like the same. I mean, at least in the continuous distribution, sometimes it will be in a uh, discrete distribution uh, in some cases, but uh, so you can see, we can sample many times. In reality, what we usually have, we have only one sample. And in, in reality, what we do uh, when we do inferential statistics, statistical inference, we have only one sample and you want to draw some conclusions from our sample to the global population. So we want to think we want to know what happened there, but what we know actually, we, uh, we only have some points and that's all. And we want to estimate something about population uh, based on our sample. We can estimate parameters like ba based on our statistics. Like we can estimate for example, by our uh, uh, sample mean. And that will be rather good estimation, actually. Uh, or we can uh, do some more complicated statistical inference. For example, null hypothesis significance testing. So uh, based on our sample, we want to uh, test some hypothesis. For example, we want to calculate value on uh, null hypothesis and null hypothesis is something always uh, about population distribution. So it's about population. But we do some drawings, uh, we, we do some, uh, we draw some conclusions based on our small sample. But uh, like, um, what is M? It, it is the number of samples, yes, we want to have. M is a, uh, uh, Mm, yeah, here, yeah, here, uh, uh, n is the number of samples. Вот я просто думаю, у нас всего три числа. И зачем нам так много samples? Yeah. Нам даже среднее посчитать проще. Because in reality, we, we don't know that we have three numbers. We don't know uh, their probabilities. Uh, we don't know anything. We only have samples. So that's a problem. Because, and, that, and uh, that's why we actually uh, discussed on this simple problem, because uh, here we know that, yeah, we have three numbers, 
we can uh, we actually know everything about this distribution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in reality, we never know uh, about the distribution. For example, uh, like what we can consider as random variable, for example, uh, height, people's height, right? Uh, so, uh, like, uh, we don't know all heights of all people, of all uh, humans. Uh, we have samples. Uh, and we can collect big samples, but we never know like real population mean uh, for age or weight or whatever other parameters for people. Uh, and here we know, here we know, uh, and that's good. That's why we can play with it and understand some uh, how it works in this case. Uh, and usually we have only one sample. In reality, it can be big sample, it can be small sample. Uh, we can even like uh, calculate what sample size we need to, for our study uh, to be valid statistically, right? Uh, but what we want to understand right now, how all the things behave, uh, like if we do like many samples, because this way we all understand something about uh, statistical uh, inference. I plot up to change. Uh, why this error happens? And that R have limitations in population do not show the results increase size. Uh, uh, it's not a limitation of calculations. It's a, a question by Alexander. It's actually a limitation of uh, uh, beans or breaks, and you can uh, set them as you want you want if you want more breaks let's do it like thousands sample size 20 no this will be too big right and let's say not let's say like 100 in this case you have more uh beans in system okay let's return to this thing so what is important? Uh, we have many samples. We have a uh, uh, sample mean for uh, every sample, right? And what we can do, we can plot this many sample means. Like don't ask me why practically we don't do that, uh, but we use this, uh, 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 this thing in, um, in statistical inference, because all these things uh, about p values, about t tests, about all this more complicated than just binomial uh, test, uh, statistical test, they are all based on this idea of sampling distribution and some uh, like some phenomena that are related to this sampling distribution. So one phenomena. Uh, is that uh, mean of the sample means will be uh, will tend to be uh, like the population mean. That seems pretty obvious, but uh, what is uh, maybe more fascinating or more inspiring that uh, a shape of the sample means uh, will be uh, closer. Uh, uh, will be closer to normal distribution despite of the original population distribution uh, with increasing n. And the larger is n, the closer the sampling distribution. So uh, in this case, it's a distribution of sample means, of many, many sample means, of infinite number of sample means. This sampling distribution will be uh, close, uh, will be close to normal distribution. As well as n is uh, is large enough, and we can see that even for uh, uh, distribution, it, it, even if you take values from distribution distribution that is far from being normal, for example, uniform distribution like right? this, or like uh, something like a log normal distribution, so something like a, 
uh, skewed distribution, like this, with heavier tails in one sense, asymmetrical distribution. If you have uh, large enough sample size, you get samples, you calculate mean of the samples, and mean of the samples will be closer to uh, normal distribution. And if you increase That is a magic of central limits here. It's really magic for me, at least, because I understand that things like uh, computation, <laughs> you know, I can try different uh, distributions and so on. Uh, and for me, it's somewhat like a magic uh, because you get, uh, there is nothing in original distribution uh, that resembles uh, normal distribution, especially in this case. Like we have just one, two, and six. But if you take uh, 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 a sample with replacement from this uh, uh, like uh, population, one, two, six, uh, if your n is large enough, you, 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 your uh, shape of this uh, sample means uh, will resemble you the normal distribution. I hope uh, it is clear because it's a very important point and it's very, it's actually a rather complicated point because you, you need to understand that there is a like distribution and population, so something that we don't know. Uh, we have many samples in theory, at least. In practice, we usually have only one sample. But what we are interested in is uh, what uh, conclusion we can draw from one uh, uh, sample. And we have hypothetical distribution of sample means or sampling distribution. Sampling distribution. It's actually very important because uh, if you know about confidence uh, intervals, uh, their uh, like, uh, calculation is based on sampling distributions. Actually, like 95% of this uh, area, right? Uh, or if you uh, have heard about uh, standard error of the means, that is, I usually use in uh, scientific publication for error marks. It's actually a standard error of sampling distribution of the means, or standard, or just uh, it's the standard distribution of uh, sampling distribution of the mean. It's, uh, or uh, another way, uh, another way is called uh, uh, standard error, or just standard error. So it's very important idea to understand. Yeah. So do you have questions for now? Any questions? Any any ideas? Any anything? I want to hear you. So I have a question, uh, but I think, I don't know, maybe it's technical because I have the same uh, formula as you have and uh, my plot uh, is, uh, I don't know, it's stuck on uh, some, so I, I ran some previous formula, then mm -hmm. change it, but plot uh, did not change. So what do I do? I, uh, I copy it, I change it, uh, like, mm. uh. And I change n and I change change size, but uh, plot uh, does not follow. Is it a bug or or maybe uh, I wrong? Yeah, actually, I don't know. You can you can share the screen. I think. Uh, okay. Just, uh, I, I I I do not know <laughs> what happens to you. Just, yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. Yep. Let's see. Okay, so uh, here's my formula. I click Control Enter to run, and uh, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and no, 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 uh, yeah. because okay, and now, uh, for example, mm -hmm. this, and so no, because mm -hmm. now it's changed, but to some other plot. Okay. Wow. Well, maybe. Maybe maybe it it was a bug because it was stuck 
uh, okay, and if you say. Oh, no, 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 do not do that. No, no, <laughs> I mean. Okay, so I did it, I did it previously, and so what, what happened? So I, uh, I tried, I tried to do that, and it, it, it was stuck, yes? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, okay, you, run it. Okay, you can run it, actually. Let's run it. Yeah, and, uh, and if I uh, say something like uh, this now, it will be stuck, yes? Oh, no, no. no uh, let's run, so, not so many. Okay, that, that will be run like three million, three million. Not, not uh, that much. So, uh, so uh, I, I will need to wait for three minutes. Okay. Uh, I mean, no, three three million, three millions. Uh, uh, set n as three millions. And okay, so now I do not understand uh, how many uh, zeros there are. So I do not know. Just uh, leave six zeros uh, here. So I need to add more zeros. No, no, no. Uh, 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 Смотрите, вот сейчас он как раз это симулирует, это долгое, это может занять какое-то время, может быть долгое, может быть не очень, зависит от вашего компьютера в том числе. И вот тут, да, вот увидите вот эту красную кнопочку, вы можете ее нажать, и тогда это все остановится и не будет. А, понял, а, я нажимал эту кнопку и думаю, почему ничего не происходит. То есть я значит, а -а -а. запускаю симуляцию. И дальше да. нажимаю эту кнопочку и смотрю, ничего не меряется. Ну, вы остановили таким образом подсчет. А, ну, понял, понял, не хорошо. Не перезаписался, не перезаписался. Хорошо, ладно, все, спасибо. And uh, how many zeros uh, are impossible to put there? Or it is possible to put uh, as many as you want, but it will just calculate it for all your life? Uh... Yeah, it's a, actually a hard question because uh, actually there, there are many uh, levels of answering this question. First of all, it depends on your operating system because in Windows there is a hard limit, but you can change this limit in terms of uh, memory that you can use. In Linux, of course, as far as I know, you don't have this hard limit. But practically speaking, yeah, uh, you know, with your like, R session, uh, needs uh, more uh, gigabytes that you have not only in RAM, but on your uh, hard disk, um, well, you, you will maybe get error some, somewhere. Uh, and with just a rather high number of N, you will be just stuck. So it depends on your computer configuration. It depends on operating system. Uh, so I cannot say like, Okay, one million is okay, but uh, one million is uh, one billion is not okay. So it just depends on your system, just depends on your computer, and uh, uh, so you will like uh, you will face uh, like this uh, problems of speed uh, and memory issues at some time, and uh, it depends on your computer and your system. And you you can try, you can try by increasing by one zero time. So after some time, you will see that you need some a few seconds, then you need one minute, then you need several minutes, then you need two weeks. Well, you will maybe you will not wait for two weeks, but in some cases it can be like because I, for, for example, I, I work for some for some model that needed. To like, I needed one week to, to, to calculate it on my computer. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions? Because yeah, uh, at least I think we are out of uh, we are out of time. Uh, Jonathan says that he cannot open it. By it, I think he means the uh, the shiny. Uh, actually, this shiny 
it was created in R. Uh, but I think I showed you my own sign, right? No, but okay. Yes, thank you. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was having problems with my internet. I could open it, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, also, maybe, yeah, we are out of time, but maybe we can um, at least do some things about uh, about uh, this uh, task, uh, about the uh, problem nine using this data set because maybe you forgot how to uh, work now this. we uh, now we do not see your screen ah, so yeah okay okay thank you uh, let's play a bit uh, about that but not for for long okay so uh, you have a problem nine that has some real data set some real data and you need to uh, apply your skills uh, of uh, data processing there. So maybe you forgot how to work with data frames. Uh, so I want to somewhat remind you how to do that. Mm, could you share this link uh, with us? Uh, yeah, okay, help link. okay, 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 yeah. It was from the, uh, from the uh, previous seminar from the previous seminar. Okay, so this link. Uh, uh, this link uh, goes to CSV file that we can even open in the browser. Uh, let's open it here. Uh, and actually, actually it's not through CSV, that's actually fun. What's different, uh, do you remember what a CSV file and what CSV stands for? Um, something about, oh, okay, no. Hmm? Comma separated values. Yeah, comma separated values. Uh, but yeah, there are some comma there, but it's obviously uh, not about uh, separation of values. So how do you think values, uh, columns are separated here instead of commas? With tab? Yeah, actually with tab, I think. So let's return to our script. Let's do it in. A... Okay, let's just continue. Uh, we have a function with CSV, and uh, don't forget that uh, you put it in a square brackets. Oh, uh, square brackets. Sorry, in um, a quotation marks because it's uh, not just a line. It's a a character uh, vector of link one with an address, or it can be, or you can download uh, download this file and uh, open it uh, like uh, have a local uh, address uh, in your like with your file system like C user uh, downloads or to last in line or safety, or even if You get if you download it in the working directory. Uh, you can just use it by you can download by the I, I can even show you how to do it because uh, opening files is a is a pain is a is a real pain. Uh, at least before you, uh, I don't know how to download it actually. Uh, I don't like it, of course, there in a, a Safari because somewhere, if you open it, it will be downloaded pretty just, just you open it, in, it automatically not opened in Safari, but it's downloaded. Um, okay. Okay, uh, what, are the, oh, what is our, yeah. 
and you you can save it there. I'm afraid that it will be не добавлять, но yeah, if it's in your working directory, I put it in my working directory. You can uh, check working directory by function get wd. So if you put it uh, in your working directory as a file, uh, you can even even uh, uh, download it. Uh, oh, sorry, import it in uh, R with just a file name. Yeah, it it was it was red, but it was red with mistake. So it didn't say I cannot find this file. It uh, says something is wrong with this file. Uh, so you will get the same if you uh, download from the uh, link in the internet. Uh, so yeah, you can see that uh, it has some mistake. And actually, yeah, that's uh, because of because uh, comma is not a separate receive. So actually, why this uh, error appears? Not just because uh, uh, comma is not a separator in this file. Uh, if it's, uh, uh, because if it was the problem, it would, it, uh, it would be just read as a one column. Like all this line uh, would be read as one column. But it, uh, it's actually a bit more complicated than that because we have some comma there. So you can see here comma, here comma, uh, here you, uh, in this line you don't have any commas. Uh, on this line you have two commas. And actually, if you use function read C3, uh, it separates uh, separates uh, this line by two columns, this line by two columns, this like is not separated, like it's one column. And this one, yeah, this uh, row is uh, separated by three columns. And what it says, like a circular red table, error in red table, more columns than names. In it. So uh, the first uh, line usually contains uh, column names, and that will be read as a one column two is one column name two, right? And, uh, but even for the first line, uh, after the uh, line with uh, column names, uh, you have a comma. So you have something like the two columns. So you have column names for one column, but uh, you have like two columns. Uh, so, that's just a, a error, uh, error that you, you get because uh, it consider comma as a separator, but it is not a real separator. Here. The real separator here is a, a tab, right? Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I'm like I talk about that really really much, and I know that it, it, it's boring part, you know, reading files, importing files. It's, it's boring. It's not so fancy like the central limit theorem. Or working with real data, like uh, do some real things with real data, not just important. But it's very important. That it's very painful. That's why uh, it's it's very cool that you know many ways to uh, import data. You can even import data by actually uh, button. Import data set. I never use this, but if you are more comfortable with uh, pressing buttons. You can try the things, try this by your own. I will not show it uh, today. Uh, it's important that you know many ways to write them. And it's important that you understand potential uh, potential problems uh, that occurs uh, that occur when you try to import data. In this case, you try to uh, apply your usual function in C3. And even, even file name contains TSV in the end, but it's, it is a trap uh, <laughs> uh, because it's not real. So it should be like, uh, it should be called TSV, top separated values. And this uh, format actually exists. Uh, in this case, there is a function read glim that's uh, actually uh, have separator as this. Uh, backslash key. 
Uh, backslash key means that. Uh, backslash n means new line. Just something like a notation that you need to know for the, such things. Uh, okay, uh, let's try to apply this. And you can see you have no mistakes and it seems pretty okay, pretty much okay. Right? Line text. Yeah. Uh, and let's save it to some to some variable. Let's call it. Uh, okay. Let, let's let's think. What is it, what is this about? The last words in verse. Last words. Let's call it last words. There was a meme like uh, um, with this guy who thinks a lot and. Uh, 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 it's written there like uh, uh, think about, about uh, variable names because it's really important really uh, important to create uh, 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 short but easy to read uh, file names okay maybe it is not so short last words here you can even use just simple gf name in this case if you work with one uh, data frame okay let's do it like that gf okay um okay let's have a look let's have uh let, let's see what we have so first of all you can just write here on gf and see it in this uh viewer inside uh our studio and let's see, yes, that everything is correctly read. Yeah. Uh, and let's also use some other functions to explore uh, this data set. Uh, other functions are head. Head is a very simple function that just returns the first six rows of uh, the uh, data frame. Or even uh, tail that do the same, but use uh, returns in the last rows uh, of the data frame. Uh, function stir that returns a structure of an object. And in this case, it returns like uh, uh, like columns that we have and like uh, data type and uh, how many columns, how many rows, and so on. Name of these columns, some values, some first values of this column, and yeah. What is important to, to check there that uh, if you see something like a number, so some uh, column uh, mostly ha uh, has some, uh, some numbers, but it is not int or double, but character, so like this. Uh, it usually means that something is wrong in your file. Maybe somewhere uh, in a column that you expect to have uh, a number, you have something else. It happens when you work with people who like copy paste tables in Excel and you use this data uh, for analysis and people who copy paste the tables from Excel, they make mistakes and you need to check this before you work with data. Uh, okay, yeah, for example, this is read uh, as uh, imported as character because you, there is an S here. It's not just 1820, but 1820S. Uh, maybe what you want also to, to do is to check like how many values an image column you have. Uh, you can do it like this, uh, like this, df, uh, dk. Or you can do uh, some additional uh, ways to inspect it, like a summary. Summary is actually a generic function in R, 
uh, generic function means that uh, it behaves differently. Uh, depends on the object that you uh, uh, use for this function. So for data frames, it was this way. For list, it, it was this way. For vector, it was differently. For different types of vectors, uh, it works differently. Uh, and usually, people when even create uh, some uh, complicated structures, some complicated S3 classes, or S4 classes, or C classes, uh, they, they write a, a method for generic function summary, plot, and print to, because like, if you don't understand what, what's going on in very specific uh, structure in some specific package, uh, you can just write, okay, summary on this object and you get some meaningful summary usually. Or plot, and you get some meaningful plots for this uh, object. For example, you can even try to plot uh, our data frame. What do you think will happen? Any ideas? Okay, maybe somebody, maybe, maybe you, you, you don't uh, <laughs> listen to me now because it, it's, uh, it's too late. Uh, okay, so just try it. Just try and you'll get actually something very, very nice. You will get uh, something like a, a matrix of scatter plots for uh, like each uh, pair of columns. Uh, so if you work in Python, especially in Pandas, you obviously know Iris. Uh, it will be easier to show how it works on e Edis uh, data set. You know, with four columns and one column with uh, uh, sort of Edis. Uh, so you, you get like this, uh, like that. So you get uh, matrix of pairwise uh, scatter plots. Uh, the same, uh, some uh, like uh, functions, plot, summary, and uh, print, they are generic, and that means that uh, they, ha they have different methods for different uh, classes. So uh, usually if you have some classes that you don't really understand, you can just try summary or plot on them and you'll get some meaningful results. Uh, okay, another thing that I wanted to show you because later, uh, we will uh, work with uh, additional packages. Uh, and it will be nice that you uh, learn how to work uh, with external packages uh, even now, because it's actually, first of all, because it's very easy. Uh, in R, uh, you download packages with a one simple line, install packages. And there are something like, I don't know, like, I think 15,000 packages on CRAN, where you actually download uh, packages when you, uh, when you run line install packages. Uh, sometimes you will need uh, something more advanced. It, it will be more complicated, but actually for installing uh, packages that are outside of base R, so if you want some additional functionality, you just run a, a line install packages and in, uh, quotation marks and name of the package or vector of names if you want several of them. Uh, so I'll just show how it works. You, you need to run this line only once. And then uh, after it's downloaded, you can write library. Uh, uh, library and uh, run this line to attach this uh, package to your uh, like uh, namespace. Uh, so, uh, and this makes uh, functions and uh, data sets in this uh, package uh, open to you. So actually this package is very simple, but 
I found it really useful. It was like, oh no, I will never use this package in real life, but actually it's really, it's really nice to use small package that uh, really uh, easy to use. What it does, it's, uh, it uh, shows some um, summary statistics uh, for all value or all columns in a uh, data frame. So you get this information, like uh, number of uh, different column types, uh, number of missing values, number of like end completion rate. So if you have any analysis, you'll have something less than one here, minimal value, maximum value, uh, uh, it's, uh, because it's character, it's minimal length and maximum length. Uh, number of unique values. So it's important that for the case you have two unique values. Uh, one eight two O S and one nine two O S. And that's all. Uh, and for numeric values, you can see that there is even something like a small histogram uh, with after symbols uh, in the end. Very nice, I think. Very nice, small package. Uh, and now you know how to install packages, right? Okay. Mm, and uh, let's return to this data set. Uh, so, yeah, it contains six columns, decade of creation. We know now for sure that it has only two values uh, this one and this one. Uh, right number of words, number of words in the random position, usually one word, but there are two words in case such as Vinabe and so on. Uh, okay, number, let's see actually what are these values. Words, so it's either one or two actually. So my uh, minimum value is one, maximum value of is two. So a number of syllables in the rhyming position. Okay, it's like uh, you can even check it in the data how it works. So uh, the language is uh, Russian here. Uh, so let's see uh, rhymes and syllables like from Charles to Czech Rosny Biet, like Biet in the rhyming position. But if you take something like more, you can see even three or even four, like. Uh, it's the whole word in the rhyming position. So uh, there are four syllables in the rhyming position. Okay, I'm not real linguist, so maybe I will see something stupid there. Uh, and, uh, just tell me about that. That's okay. Um, you can get even five here. And here you can get like max values, uh, like six. And percentiles, actually, it's a uh, first, uh, second, and the third quartile. But if you don't know about that, it's okay for now. Um, but okay, if you want to um, Explore a bit, it's uh, really nice to see like the max uh, and the mean values for this variable. How to do that? Uh, you extract this uh, column as a vector and use the function max for that. Max mean, right? Or even table. So now we know that the longest. Uh, line, uh, the longest uh, number of syllables in the rank position is six. And let's find this one. How to do that? Uh, so in this case, we compare, we compare this uh, vector to six. And actually what we got there is a very long, uh, Logical vector, false, 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 with one small true in the end. It's even hard to find it, right? And then we use this logical vector 
to uh, subset from the uh, original data, data frame uh, the role that we are interested in. So we use this logical vector to select roles. So we use, uh, so we set this uh, line of code before, before comma. And what would we use after the comma to get the whole line? Okay, actually, we'll, we'll use nothing there because if you if you use nothing there, we'll get the whole uh, line of code because we like if we do not uh, use anything there, uh, we get all columns. We want to to have all columns, but one specific line where uh, uh, on this position, right and seal equal to six. And we can even write this line text. Не испытали корабле крушение. Корабле крушение is a like a long uh, word in the right position. Тали корабле крушение. Корабле крушение. No, it's like the whole right uh, word, right? Uh, Okay, that's how we do some this simple things. Uh, okay, <clears throat> um, we'll not focus now on a null hypothesis, but remember that null hypothesis is always about uh, population, it's not about our sample. But our sample is something like uh, just a sample from the population. So uh, be aware about that. Um, like, uh, let's do these things at least, and I think it will be uh, enough for today because we are out of time pretty much. <laughs> uh, filter out the relevant, uh, relevant observations from uh, 20s. So, first of all, uh, we need to uh, creating subset of our bigger data set that contains only rows for uh, uh, to, uh, for uh, 20th century, right? So where decade is 192OS, but not 182OS. And we do it the same way uh, that we uh, did it for uh, selecting rows where uh, right and, and still equal to six. So we uh, compare with two equal signs decade to one eight s right. Right. We we use we explore twenty cents right. Uh, we get this logical vector. First values are false and all the last values are true. And then we use this uh, vector to select rows from the original DM. And we do not set uh, anything there after the comma because we want all columns. We could select some because we don't need all of them. We don't need outer, for example, right? We don't need uh, this one. Uh, right words. Maybe uh, we don't need decade uh, anymore because we just selected one. So we can just take, uh, for example, uh, just one uh, column, for example, or column and uh, you post something like that, right? But okay, let's in this situation, we want to just, uh, we are more interested in just selecting rows then in uh, selecting columns, so let's just keep it like that. And if we write, uh, run this line, we get in the console uh, this subset of the original DF. Uh, but we need to save it in another variable. 
So let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. So we uh, calculated this subset from the EF and then we assigned it to a new variable EF1920. Uh, okay. Calculate the number of verbs observed in the sample and the sample size. Okay, how to calculate sample size? Actually, it's pretty simple. There are many ways for that. And one of them is just uh, think there in the environment that we have uh, 277 uh, observations. That's actually is sample size. Uh, other, verb, uh, other ways are calculating is using function beam. That will return a vector uh, with number of rows and number of columns. We have 277 rows, and that's what we need to And uh, as far as I remember, there is an n row function. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure if uh, n row is a base function. Oh, uh, yeah, it's base function. Yeah. yeah. So we don't need a specific package for it. Um, right. Uh, and you need to calculate um, number of verbs observed in the sample. So actually, you can do it in two ways, right? Uh, verbs. Uh, yeah, you have this verb, and you can, uh, what you can do, you can uh, use it like this. You can pause uh, where to verb, and then use that to, I'm oh, not sorry, yeah, compare, uh, and then use it to select. Uh, select uh, the uh, rows for the new data frame and then calculate uh, number of rows in this new data frame. But it's somewhat like, you, you can do it easier a bit because actually uh, when you calculate it, uh, this logical vector, what you actually need to do, you just need to calculate number of truths there. Uh, so I will even command this line because I do not recommend you to do this way. Uh, so actually, uh, if you remember, uh, there is something like a caution rule when you apply uh, a function uh, for example, you, you, you uh, do uh, you conduct an operation on uh, uh, different types of data. They will be cursed to one data, to one the most common data type. For example, if you uh, do an operation on uh, true and two, true will be cursed to number and logical values are converted as like false is converted to zero, true is converted to one. So if you combine true and two in a vector and vector can be only one data type, it will be like one and two. If you combine it as false, it will be one, two, zero. Uh, okay, why I remind you about that? Uh, because if you apply the function sum, that is usually applied for numbers, right? On logical vectors, can be considered as some like uh, some particular example of person. Actually, inside this function, it works uh, a bit differently. It definitely uh, calculates number of truths if you uh, use uh, uh, some on uh, logical vector. Uh, but it can be considered some case of a uh, particular case, particular example of person actually. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it's like it's something like it converts uh, 
falls to zero and two to one. And then you calculate some of this vector, some of this vector, and you get number of trees in the vector. So it's an easier way to calculate uh, number of verbs, uh, verbs in the uh, in the uh, vector. So no, uh, in this column, we'll post. And to get uh, to get uh, ratio of these verbs to all words, you just need to divide one number to another, and you get this number. Okay, I think that's uh, enough for now. I know it's too late, uh, but I wanted to show you some important, interesting things. Important, uh, like no. Really, uh, features that are really used in analysis. Uh, really used in analysis that will save your life. That will make your work in R uh, easier and uh, better, uh, and more comfortable and even faster. Uh, yeah. So that's why we are all the time. But I hope it was uh, helpful for you. I will save the script and send it to uh, in the group. So that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask it now, or we can just finish the seminar. Okay, bye everyone. Uh, Ivan, I have yep. questions, but I do not want to like everyone to stay and hear if they are tired. So. Uh, no. Okay, if you don't, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the end of the seminar, uh, and I can answer your questions. So, yeah, so yeah, you can ask them. That's right time for the actually, anytime, yeah. right time for questions. Да, может быть, может быть, я даже тогда по-русски спрошу. Да, да, можно, да, да. Я просто хотел вас попросить показать, как вы получили, вот когда мы в самом начале семинара делали много нулей, вот как вы получили тысячу нулей, потому что меня, я, я не понял, что вы изменили, то есть как я могу это повторить. Так, вот да, э, реп, ну, а, сейчас, да, сейчас, да, да. Да, да. Реп ноль, там, ну, сто раз, да, то есть... Uh, no, нет, нет, вот именно там, это вот у нас было uh, n тысяча, sample means, uh, rep, вот как-то через rep это делалось, или? Да, ну то есть сначала, вот, это просто вот именно для цикла for, ну и вообще как бы, ну, ну как бы, вот, uh, когда, ну то есть это очень-очень-очень редко, когда я такой, ну ладно, я сейчас как-то сделаю, использую цикла for. Вот, поэтому вот это все, в принципе, оно не так как бы вот обязательно, на мой взгляд, но на мой взгляд и это, это важно. Ну, в принципе, я тоже показываю на занятиях других каких-то циклов фор, поэтому окей, в принципе. Просто я к тому, что это не самая важная вещь, но если такой есть вопрос, то почему бы нет. Да, то есть мы здесь создали примерно n, которую начнет 300, и мы, соответственно, повторим 0 n раз 300 раз. У нас получается вот этот sample means, который есть вот эти нули, да. Вот. А, в чем вопрос? Может, у, у вас что-то не так получается просто? Может, да, я сейчас, может быть, покажу. Mm -hmm. Сейчас, одну секунду, потому что а, у меня вроде все, ну, вроде, вроде написано все то же самое, а, а, хотя, может быть, а, ну, кстати, да, может быть, даже можно снять запись, потому что, наверное, это уже не... Ну, окей, хорошо, давайте. Я... Да, давайте. Запись.